Greetings, my name is Mike and let's see how we can set up the navigation architecture component to work with the navigation drawer. First off, let's check my little demo app here. When I open up my activity, we'll see that we just have a navigation drawer as expected and has some items in it and when you click on one, it just updates the content based on what you clicked on. Pretty straightforward and this is actually the template that Android uses when you go to create a new navigation drawer activity. Pretty straightforward and then when you press back it kind of just goes back. But the, what I want to show you and what I want to really emphasize is how easy and straightforward the navigation component makes it to actually implement all of that. Because let's take a look at how you do it without the navigation component. So as you can see this is what it looks like and there's quite a lot of code just to do a fairly simple thing. You have to do things like create this weird action bar drawer toggle object and you have to magically know to add it as a listener on the drawer layout and then call this weird sync state method like what does that even mean and then you have to add a listener which is which gets called when the item is changed and then when you click on an item you have to manually create a fragment and then do a fragment transaction and set the activities title as well and then you also have to the first time you load the activity you have to tell it what you want to select first Right, I want to select the home item by default and I want to load the home fragment as well, which seems like quite unnecessary. And then you also have to handle back press logic, like closing the drawer if it's open, otherwise just going normally back. Which seems like a lot of unnecessary stuff that I don't want to do and I'm pretty sure most of us don't. And luckily the navigation component can do all of this basically for us. So we'll see how we can actually do that. But first, we need to go and add the Gradle dependency as normal, because that's how Android life is. So I'm just going to go to my build.gradle file and add it. Now there are a few different versions of these dependencies, depending on if you have Kotlin in your project and if you have Android X. I have Android X and Kotlin here, so this is what I'm going to be using. But just check out the docs so you, so you can find out all the different uh, combinations that there are. I'm just going to go ahead and sync up and hopefully it doesn't take too long. Alright, it's done. That was not bad. So I'm going to go and create a new uh, resource file. Oh, by the way, if you're not familiar with the navigation component at all, I recommend checking out one of my previous videos first where I did a basic walkthrough because this video kind of assumes that you have some knowledge of the navigation component. So um, do check it out if you're interested. But I'm going to go and create a new resource here, which is my door navigation file and it's going to be a, a navigation graph basically and inside here I'm just going to add each of my fragments that I have that you can choose from in the drawer for example the home fragment I'm going to add and gallery and, and so on just for each of the fragments that you can choose all right that's done so as you can see we have home gallery send share slideshow and tools fragments we have six of them in total and I've set my home fragment to be the home destination, basically the first thing that loads up when the activity starts. Next, I'm going to go just to the text editor here because it's a bit easier to do what I'm about to do. Now, the important thing that we need to do here is change the IDs of each destination to correspond to our menu file, right? If you've ever set up a, draw, a navigation drawer before, you know that you can create a menu resource file which just lists each of the items you can have in the drawer. That's standard practice that's been around for a while now. But what I need to do, and this is very important, is for each of the items here, I need to use its ID for the corresponding destination in the navigation graph. Very important, otherwise it won't know how to link everything up properly. For example, for my home item here, the ID is nav underscore home. So in my uh, graph here, I need to change my home destination's ID to be um, nav underscore home and also quite important I'm going to take out the plus in front here because I'm not creating a new ID here I'm reusing the existing one that was created in the menu file right it has a plus here saying create a new ID called nav home and here I'm just pointing to that existing ID quite important I've seen some weird stuff happen if you put in a plus here instead of leaving it out and just ends up being confusing so just be sure to yeah, to leave out the plus and to have the same ID as in the menu file. And I'm just going to go ahead and change it for all the other destinations as well. Alright, that's done. I must just also remember to change the ID of the start destination to match the home destination and format it a bit. So last thing I want to do in here is just change each of the labels for the destinations to just be a string resource. You'll see what these are shortly, but luckily I've got strings defined for all of them. So I'm just going to go and do that. Alright, that's done. 
So as you can see now, I have string resources for all of the labels and I have IDs that correspond to the menu items that have been created. Now I can just go ahead and close all of those actually. And I just want to go to my activities layout file. And I have a, I had a frame layout here that I was doing the fragment transactions in, but I'm just going to now change this to be a fragment and whose name is nav host fragment. Right, this is the normal stuff that you do for, for the nav component. And I'm just gonna add my two properties here, nav graph, point it to our navigation file we just created and app uh, default nav host equals true. Again, uh, if you're not familiar with these attributes, just check my previous video where I do kind of explain what's going on here. Oh, and the ID, I just want to make it a bit more uh, sensible. <laughs> now, host fragment, and then I can just close that layout file. All right, now finally we get to the interesting part, which is the activities code. In here, in my on create, the first thing I'm going to do is just reference my nav view object, which, if I go to the layout file, is just this navigation view, which is the standard thing that you do for navigation drawers. So I'm going to, on that thing, I'm going to say, no, I'm going to say setup with nav controller. And then in here, I'm just going to pass in my nav controller, which we do by finding nav controller r.id nav host fragment. And I'll just extract the nav controller just to a variable. Also, I want to just say set up action bar with nav controller and then pass it our nav controller. This is just going to make sure that the nav component takes care of the little menu at the top left, the little three bars, changing that to a back arrow and stuff for us, so we don't have to worry. Now, also pretty important is we need to create this app bar config object. This basically specifies um, how our navigation must behave. The first thing is just going to be a set of IDs, which I'll explain now. And then we just pass it a reference to our drawer layout object here which again in the layout file is just the draw layout object that is again standard now over here this set is basically a collection of the top level destination ids that we have and typically for a navigation drawer each of the items in the nav drawer will be a top level destination so i'm just going to go and add an id here for each of my items in the navigation drawer obviously we're going to have home and gallery and so on all right there we go we have six ids now one for each destination and i'm just going to actually make this into a field which is a uh going to be in kotlin and late in var which is going to be app bar config app bar configuration and i'm just going to set the field to this thing that we just created Cool, and then we just also need to pass it in here in setup action bar with nav controller. We pass it our app bar config object that we just created. We're actually almost done now. There's just one more thing we have to do. We have to override uh, on support navigate up, and here we have to return find nav controller nav host fragment dot navigate up uh, no, navigate up and then in here we pass it again our app bar config and then we just say or super dot support navigate up this is basically just making sure that the nav component handles the top left button click like the menu and stuff because it can't just magically do that by itself unfortunately so we have to override this method and just tell the nav controller that hey they try to navigate back and handle it from there that's basically all well not basically that is all for the activity so it gives me great pleasure to do this i can go and delete all of the other code we had previously boom and that's what our activity now looks like also take out the interface that we implemented right that's a lot better i think already from all that code down to this little bit which is a lot more manageable and easy to maintain and just a pleasure to look at actually but before we get too excited and too carried away let's build this and see what happens i have to just excuse me my gradle is a bit running a bit slow here because much like my brain when i'm recording it just slows down 
Okay, there we go. It wasn't too bad. So if I go to my nav drawer, cool, we can see that it correctly loads the home and we have a, a three bars up here. We click on it, the menu comes out. Cool, we can select one of the items. It automatically just changes to the different items based on what you chose. Slight difference here is if you press back when not on the home fragment, it'll take you back to the home destination and back on there will just close the activity. But as you can see, it literally just gives you the same behavior that you had before, but it's now much more of a pleasure to work with and to maintain because there's a lot less code. Unfortunately, if you're using Java, um, the code will be a bit more here, but it will still end up being a lot better than what we had previously. If you're using Java, by the way, I will maybe end up putting comments in here what the Java should be because it is a little bit different, especially for this app bar configuration. But anyway, yeah. Also, one more thing I want to mention. Um, if I open up my navigation file again, right, as you can see in here, I didn't add any actions between any of these fragments, right? These are all top level fragments. But it will just work as expected if you add it. Okay, let's actually just go and do that. Let's add. I'm going to go and add another fragment here. Let's just say home. So yes, it does exist already. Tools is here twice now, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to add an action that takes me from, say, from share to the tools fragment. Cool. So we can see now we still have six top level ones and we have an extra sub test. I don't know what it's called, but I'm just going to go and add a button now that actually will navigate that for us. So if I go to my share fragment, I'm just going to say... Uh, Demo the text view there, set on click. Listener, find nav controller dot uh, navigate. Action to tools fragment, right? Let's see how it handles this for us now. All right, here we go. So the expected behavior would be when I'm on another sub destination or not top level destination. Um, this drawer should disappear because it's only supposed to be visible on top level destinations. So this would then hopefully change to a back button. So let's see. I navigate to my share fragment and when I click on the text view, look at that. How cool is that? We navigate to our tools fragment as expected, but now the icon has changed from our menu button to a back button with a cool little flippy animation thing. Uh, don't mind the title, that's because I didn't set the label correctly in the navigation graph, but you get the idea, right? Now, if I press back, cool, we go back to our share fragment and we have the menu button back again. Back on there and takes us to home as expected. So, as you can see, you can have lots of top level destinations like I did in the graph here. And then those top level ones can go to other destinations and then the navigation component handles it all for you. You don't have to, you're not forced to start a whole new activity just to hide the menu button anymore. So, I think... As I said already, the navigation component is very powerful and I can't wait to use it properly. Um, I'm sure they're gonna keep on adding new stuff to it in the future, but what they have already is, is pretty insane. So that's all I've got for this video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something from it. Do check out my previous ones. I've got, I think, two other ones on the navigation component. Um, as you can see here on the left, there's a, a basic sample, which is one everyone should check out. And then the, a bottom nav one. If you're interested in using navigation component with a bottom nav view, then check that out. But anyway, I'm rambling a bit now and <laughs> I think this video is going to be long enough. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and cheers for now.